No person would ever put their children in a boat if the water wouldn't be safer than the land. No person ever would. This sentence was going through my head again and again ever since I heard it for the first time. And still today, it makes me breathe and think inside myself deeply. When then, refugees came to my village in January 2015, I was asking myself what I can do to support them, what I can do to contribute. I am not the government, not an NGO like the Caritas, I'm not the mayor, but I knew I can do something, and I was asking myself what it is. Chris Anderson, creator of TED, said that ideas are the most powerful force shaping human culture. I agree, and with this time we spent with the refugees, I figured out that it is about the small ideas to cause great impact. I want to share with you five of the ideas that my community implemented and that helped us to have a positive way of living together with the refugees inside the community. Idea one, the basket. We simply put in a basket to the local supermarket. Because when the refugees arrived, they came with a lot of needs. And we thought it is the simplest thing for us to supply them with food, some hygienic articles. So all you need to do is put a basket and a list of needs, needs that keeps updated to the local supermarket. Kindly ask the shop owner if you're allowed to put it there. Find one or two of the refugees who pick it up twice a week. And then, of course, fairly share it with all the others. And actually, this idea is very simple, but it has a big impact. Because on one hand, of course, it supplies the guests with the basic needs. But on the other hand, it is a chance to get everyone of the community involved. Because everyone anyhow goes to the local supermarket, and they go there, they see that something is happening, and everyone can contribute without even going to the refugee place or getting in contact in the first time. Idea two, welcome cafes. People from my community organized welcome cafes that happened once a month on Friday, where they organized food, drinks, where people were able to come together, had some program, culture, music, exchange. You need to organize it, you need to invite people, you need to find a date, a place where it will happen. You need to have some music and, of course, you need food. And food, actually, is one of the greatest ways to exchange cultures and to bring people together. Because as soon as you have food and drinks and music, you will get more people involved. More people from the community will come, will take part, and you can make a positive feeling and a positive atmosphere of living together and experiencing each other's culture. Idea three. This idea might be a bit disruptive in the first moment. We asked the refugees living in our community to draw their ways from their home countries to Austria, to the final spot they reached and where they will maybe stay. We asked them to draw all the countries they've gone through, where they started, where they ended up, how they got from one country to the other. Was it by feet? Was it by plane? Was it in a truck or was it by boat? And we asked them to share with us their stories. So what do you need? Of course, you need the people to draw the pictures. And this is the biggest challenge, because this brings in a situation where you can exchange, where they are reflecting their stories, where people living here get the chance to understand better what happened, what these people gone through. And it makes a fundament 
of living together, of understanding each other, and also for getting friendships and for really exchanging. Idea four is called the contribution list. So actually, when people are coming to other countries, and it's the same for all people over the world, and I'm sure it's the same for you, nobody on earth wants to feel useless. But it happens many times that refugees come and they have to wait and wait and wait until they get their interview and until they get their positive asylum paper. So, in this time they are not allowed to work, but they want to contribute. And many refugees experience, like it was in my community, that there are people who are helping them, supporting them and welcoming them. So they want to give something back and they want to do something, of course. So the simple idea is what we made. We made a contribution list where everyone who wanted to do something was able to write down what they can offer. It can be an Arabic course for people. It can be a cultural cooking course. It can also be someone who says that they are able to fix some bikes and want to help some people. Or someone who wants to help old people carrying home the things from the so local supermarket when they are there. Or what we had, for example, we had one woman from Syria, and she was a fitness trainer, and she offered for us a ladies' workout once a week. And this idea, making this contribution list, has this big impact, because an important thing of living together, living together inclusively, is appreciation. And appreciation can only happen when everyone can take part, and everyone can show what they are able to do. Idea five I want to share with you is actually the most simple of all. Idea five is playing football. What you can do is you can ask the club owner of the football club in your village if he can open for some new guests. And this is also what we did. And we had boys from our village playing football with the refugees sometimes a week. And this has big benefits because a club can get quite a lot of good players in the first way, then you have people who want to do something. They want to play football, and it's not about language, it's not about culture, it's not about talking to each other, it's just about enjoying passion, enjoying playing football together. And this then affects that the boys also go home, tell their parents, tell their friends, okay, I play football with our new guests and they are really cool, they are good players and I want to keep in touch with them. And this is then what builds an inclusive community. These were just five ideas out of so many more that my community imp implemented and out of so many more that other people had and that other people are implementing. So let me share with you some of my learnings. First, I know now that it was no big plan in the beginning when the refugees came, but much more an organic way of ideas evolving one after the other that made us an inclusive community where we live together with the refugees. Second, integration of refugees doesn't have to be a challenge. For us, it came out to be a chance, because what happened for us in our community is that people from the village grew closer together and that we built a new and inclusive community together with the refugees inside our village. Third, you can also be angry on refugees. Within every group of people, no matter where you go, no matter of gender, of age, of culture, of language, of background, you will find people you like and you will find people you don't like. And you will find people you consider as good people, and you will find people you consider as bad people, and you will find people you get along with and don't get along with. And actually, that's perfectly fine. That's normal, that's human, that happens to every one of us and everywhere we go. But the final thing, and the first, the before was what leads me to this, is no matter how many doubts you have, no matter how many withdrawals you make, never give up. Because contributing as much or as little as we can is worth it. All we need to do 
is bring together the people that want to do something, make them share and implement their ideas, and give them the chance to, together with small ideas, create something big. Because there's one right way to do it now. We need to face the challenge, we need to make it our chance, and we need to contribute. Thank you.